<laughs> I don't know where it is. This is my new eight pound ultralight backpacking setup. Sign for fast packing trips. Before we get started with this video, I need your guys' help. There's some things with this backpack setup I don't think are gonna work for me, so I need some feedback. I don't know everything fully honest to that. <laughs> I need to know what you guys think for certain areas. Go wild in the comments down below. Give me your guys' feedback because I'm going to need it for this trip coming up. I don't even know how to pronounce the backpack name. I'll look it up on Google. Serratus. 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 Sir. Ah. Tuts. Okay, for the backpack, this is something you guys probably haven't seen before. This is the Mech Serratus 40 liter. I've tested it out on about four hikes so far, just day hikes, and it has these nice running vest style shoulder straps that I'm actually loving a ton. You got a hip belt, mesh pocket on the outside, and these very awkwardly shaped water bottle pockets, which you can't get access to while you're running. On the vest, there's lots of room here. You can stuff a water bottle. I have a 700 milliliter smart water bottle up front. It's okay, it's a little awkward to grab. <laughs> I made the ultralight jabroni mistake by removing the sticker, so now when I try to remove the bottle, it really sticks in there. Didn't even save me a gram taking it off. I kind of regret doing that. Okay, let's toss on the pack. Whoa. Oh, that landed on so perfectly. So you can see with the water bottle, it's a little bit awkward to grab. So you gotta yank it out. And yeah, it really sticks in there good and kind of. Should I have a hydro flask in here? This is my. <laughs> Should I have a hydro flask in here? <laughs> Should I have a soft flask in here instead of this 700 milliliter smart water bottle? I feel like that's probably the best way to go. Probably sit in there a lot more comfortable. The hip belt pockets are a little bit tight. I can fit my iPhone in here, the regular iPhone 13 Pro. Fine when I'm jogging around, sometimes the upper part could shake on me a bit. I don't know if it's because I don't have a setup correctly, but that's just why I know. It's why I'm out trail running. So the Serratus weighs 26.2 ounces with how I have it configured. I have the frame removed. I haven't hiked yet with the frame in it. What I'm planning on doing with the bag, I'd rather have the frame out and keep it as light as possible. The Serratus was extremely cheap when I picked it up. It was only 100 US dollars when I got it on sale, which is insane for an ultralight backpack. Middle of this nylon hybrid mix. It's okay. It absorbs water when it's raining out, so then I know it stays saturated. I just leave everything inside a garbage bag on the inside here. Anyway, that's enough for the backpack now. Let's talk about what I have on the outside. The water bottle pockets, as you see, are really tall, so it makes it difficult to grab them. But here I have... Oh. Don't take off your labels. Another 700 milliliter smart water bottle. Platypus cooked are all screwed onto the lid. Using this as my dirty system, and I can just fill up my other one and carry water with this. I should talk about what this whole setup is for. I plan on doing a yo-yo hike of the Juan Fuca Trail here on Vancouver Island. It's roughly 47 kilometers long, one way, and I'm planning on to hike it all in one day, camp out one end, and then come back the other way the next day. It's gonna be a really tough hike, and I'm gonna try to do it as fast as I can while I'm actively moving, then recover overnight, then come back again at a fast pace. I like to challenge myself, and I think this is a really good challenge for me and to see what it's like to go really minimal with my gear. Also not bringing any of my regular camera gear, which I've never done on a hike, so it's a little bit interesting. I'm curious how I'm gonna document it all. I'll need some suggestions down in the comments too to talk about that. In the back of the backpack, I have my rain jacket. It's your classic frog dog. It looks like a, a bright blue garbage bag is the best way to put it. it. Keeps me dry though, and I can't get over how light it is compared to my Arterix jacket. Frog dogs in an extra large is only 6.3 ounces compared to my Arterix jacket, which is 23 ounces. That's an incredible amount of weight savings there. I don't know how well it's gonna hold up, and I've heard awful things about its long-term durability, but it's only $30 Canadian for me. This back pocket is a little tight and can be a little difficult to grab things from. On the outside here, I have my tent stakes. I have only six tent stakes with me, so I'm carrying the Durston x -Men Pro 2 Plus, four MSR Groundhog tents and two tents that came with my land shan tent. That's all I need for setting up the x -Med. I intend on picking a campsite that's going to be out of the wind and nice and sheltered, which can be tough on the coast. The hip belt pockets, I'm going to keep my phone in one of them and the other one just my keys and probably my AirPods. I have a question. Do you think AirPods are good enough for long distance hiking? Uh, I'm concerned about the battery of life of them, of them dying. These are AirPods Pro 2. I wonder if I should get corded headphones and use that. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think I should do. I like listening to podcasts when I'm outside. Since I'm also on the West Coast. I don't have it with me right now, but I'll be having bear spray in the pocket. Luckily, we only have black bears on Vancouver Island. Bear is a bear. For filming it, I was planning on using my GoPro Action 4 I picked up recently, but I just smashed the rear. No concern about the durability of this thing. I'm wondering if I should just use my iPhone instead. Inside the backpack, I'm keeping everything inside a garbage bag, which is only 2.2 ounces. Up top, I have my cook system, just my classic pot I've been using. I'm having a hard time justifying buying the Togues pot. I may do that before I actually leave and pick up the Tokes 550 milliliter pot because this thing works great for me. And then I just have a Sea to Summit spoon. It's only 12 grams. I remember everything in grams. I'm trying to say everything in ounces for you guys because I know most of you guys are American. And then let's skip over my Diddy bag because that has the rest of my cook set up. I'm keeping it pretty lightweight for my Diddy bag. Got the classic BRS 3000, a big mini lighter. I took off the little safety guard on it because 
I don't know, I've always liked it off. Makes it easier to strike. Pot, spoon, lighter, stove, everything comes up to 5.3 ounces, which I think is pretty light. And this is a really cheap option. Really on the fence about getting the toe because I don't feel like I need it right now. I'd rather use that money towards gas to go on more adventures right now. For my ditty bag, I'm just using a plastic sandwich bag. The rest is my ditty bag that I have. I have these three cables that I have used just off Amazon. USB-C, USB micro, and then an iPhone lightning cable. And then I just have some blue gold tape and a bunch of Advil. For powering all my devices, I have the Anchor 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank, $20 Canadian, 8.5 ounces. I shaved a bit of weight compared to my 20,000 milliamp hour battery bank compared to this 10,000 milliamp hour battery battery bank, had by Garmin and Reach Explorer Plus. I honestly don't know if they even sell this anymore. I haven't seen it in any stores in a while. And when I checked online everywhere, it seems to be out of stock. I still need to look into it, but when I try to text someone and won't send texts to them, I need to contact Garmin support before I go. But if anyone's had this issue before, let me know down in the comments why my Garmin wouldn't be sending text messages to people. I keep it with me though, just for the SNL SOS feature, in case I ever need it. That does it for my small accessories. It seems really minimal for me, but I feel like I got everything there. Up next for clothing, I'm bringing in a, a Polar Tech fleece. This one's from Matt Pack. I picked it up in New Zealand a few months ago. Extremely lightweight, only six ounces for this, and it's quite warm. People say that they have durability issues with this, but I've hiked in it lots and I've found it, it's held up quite well. And then I have a second pair of socks. Um, my feet are gonna get really wet on the first day, so I wanna be able to switch out to a nice quick dry pair. I have these really thin, darn tough socks. They're only an ounce and a half. For my sleep system, I have the Sea to Summit Arrows pillow. It's only 2.8 ounces. It feels very similar to the Trekology pillow that I used to have. A little bit taller though. I like to stick my backpack underneath it. Typically though, I'm hiking with my Southwest 55. We'll see how this Mac backpack does with it underneath to elevate it at night. Hoping I have a good sleep on that night because I'm gonna be really tired. Got my good old quilt. It's my lighting equipment, 40 degree quilt. I've been using this thing for years. It's, I'm noticing the downs clumping up on it. Probably because as you can see, it's almost transparent now. Yeah, how about this when I hold it up to the sun? It's not doing as well as it used to. I've had it for years and I've never washed it. I think it's time for me actually to wash it to break up the down and to give everything some more loft again in it, give it some more life. And then of course some pad straps for the quilt. I believe my quilt gotten a lot of grit in it too over the years that could contribute to the down clumping up. I know it's heavier on my scale than what a light and equipment list on their website. I know quite often weights can be different than what they actually are listed online. It should be roughly hundred grams lighter than that going off the light and equipment's website. And I think it's putting on a weight with time. I should mention the reason why I'm thinking that too also because my x Pro 2 Plus is heavier than it was when I first weighed it. It's got some dirt on it. I think it's time to give everything a good cleaning. Probably should do that before going on the hike just to save a few more grams here and there. It's free weight savings. Just clean by cleaning my gear. The tent right now weighs 612 grams. About 60 grams heavier than it was when I first bought it. So 60 grams of dirt just sitting on this. And the last thing in my backpack is my sleeping pad. Neil Air X Lite. This is the pre-NXT version, the older one. I'm actually glad I have this thing still because for the long wide version, this is only 15.6 ounces, which is lighter than the, the current NXT version. It's not as warm, it's comfortable, and it's a lot louder, but you know what, it's lighter. At the end of the day, you're using an x light because you want to stay light. I don't know most people are using an x light because it's a more comfortable option compared to something else they have. Well, unless you're using like a closed cell phone pad, then that would suck. If you're curious about any of the gear in this video, make sure you go check out the links down in the description. I should talk about what I'm wearing too. I'm gonna be wearing a gray long sleeve. I have a, I have a new Patagonia Sun hoodie. It's quite similar to this Prada one. A little bit looser fitting, a bit longer. It's a little bit more comfortable. Got these Patagonia shorts as well. I pick up the Patagonia baggies, ones that are half off, so it's a nice deal. I cut off the liner on the inside. A good quick dry short that has massive pockets in it because the pockets go all the way down to the end of the cut. You're rocking the Apple Watch SE. The battery life on it is not the best. I need to find something to replace it, but it'll do for now. And then I'm gonna use my ASIC Trail Runners with some darn tough socks. That combination seems to work pretty good for me. Sometimes I get blisters in my big toe and the second biggest toe, that area there. I'll be paying attention to that as I start hiking along. If I start feeling hot spots, I'll be putting some local tape between my toes. Make sure to subscribe so you can check out that video. It'll be happening in a couple weeks after I post this one. On the last video I just posted it about five areas of gear that I got wrong. You guys are awesome down in the comments. Lots of feedback made me think about a lot of those areas. I really appreciate it. Thank you. If you're curious about that video that I was referring to and you haven't seen it yet, it's, uh, it's on one of these sides over here.